What's up? For, how about that dude? He's pretty impressive, huh? Got a couple yeah, of man. Y'all saw the same thing I saw, man. I got to spend a couple of days with him. So, but how you guys doing? I'm sure we'll follow up on that, Aaron. But uh, good to see you, man. Uh, what? What's uh, obviously defensive line? You got a lot to replace there, but you've added a lot with these transfers. What did you guys like about how these pieces all fit together and how they can, you know, mesh with the younger guys you guys are developing? Yeah, I think it was very, very important, right? With us losing some of the some of the guys we were going to lose up front for um, us to go out and find some. I mean, it's hard to find Johnny Newton, right? But um, and keep Randolph, but to find guys who we felt like could come in and make make a potential impact. And so um, I think Coach Jamison, Coach Jamison, between Coach Jamison and Coach B, they did a tremendous job, right? And um, Pat Hamilton identifying guys that we needed up front, right? Um, and went out and got them, right? Um, Coach Bullen, who's no obviously no longer here, he did a phenomenal job recruiting um, Daniel Brown, who I think is going to be a really good player for us, you know, and I'm excited um, to see him kind of take part in spring ball. And so, you know, when you you have a relentless recruiter like our head coach, right, um, and you show the players the the scheme they'll be in, you know, I, I think just naturally, right, like with all those dudes having a chance to come up here and see the place and touch and feel their staff, like it, it, it like they wanted to be here. and um, I, I thought that was very, very important that we just try to find guys who fit what we do, who fit our DNA, you know, and um, we feel like we hit home runs in, 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 in those departments, you know, especially up front. So we're really excited about spring and um, looking forward to the growth and development of, of these guys. And um, um, from that, you know, moving forward to fall camp and season. Obviously, you had so many DBs get experience thrown into the fire a little bit last year. How does that translate into the spring, Aaron, where you, you had only one transfer in Chase Canada there? What is this spring like for them and for you and, and that development going into next year? Well, I, I tell you this, I got a lot more gray hairs at the end of the season, you know. Um, um, so when the season was over, um, I, I kind of looked up, you know, the guys who, who we had to replace and all those dudes were starting on NFL teams, right? And, and you kind of laugh about it, but – you know, you go from that to a bunch of young bucks back there in the secondary. But I think going into the the second spring with this group, right? Um, some of them guys are going to their third year. Some of them going to their going into their second year, right? We got a couple of guys who are newbies here. Um, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be great for them. I think anytime you have been in a system, right, and you've done it for more than a spring, and you're more moving into your second spring, a potential second season. I think naturally you should be better, right? Things should be a little more clear to you. Um, obviously, the 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 pace of the game, you should play it a little faster. And so, like, again, can't get these guys enough reps, you know, but I'm, I'm really, really excited about spring ball, um, coming into this spring ball with this group of young men, just because, right, obviously returning Miles Scott, who's, who's first-year starter, right, played a lot, a lot of football for us this past season, but that was his first time doing it, right? And so having him come into – to until his second spring, right? Um, as the starting free safety, right? I think it's gonna be it's gonna be good for his development moving forward. Matt Brissettage, right? Who 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 kind of showed himself towards the end of the season and made some plays for us. Having him, right, take that next step, right, in in in, in planning another spring. Like I think I think when anytime you talk about growth and development, right, you talk about tough, smart, dependable. Um, nothing happens within the span of a year in terms of development, right? It's it's a year-round deal. And, right, I think when you can move into the second season, the second phase of spring, right, the second spring for a lot of these cats, second spring for me as a as a play caller, um, it's just some things that I see different, right, which I'm really, really excited about. And and I think it's going to be very, very massive that we, um, that we find out the guys that can help us this spring, you know, um, so really looking forward to that. Really looking forward to these group of young men. I think they're all hungry. They all are natural pleasers. They all want to get out there and and, and show what they're and show their ability. And um, we're really looking forward to it as coaches. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Coach, uh, off season's pretty short, and with these uh, staff changes, some new coaches coming in. What's what's kind of the process for integrating those guys, getting them ramped up, familiar with the scheme, familiar with the with their players, and and, and ready to roll for spring ball. Well, some people had a spring break. Um, some people's spring break was reduced, right? Anytime you have new coaches come in, you know, um, obviously with Clint get, getting here at the time that he got in here, you know, we had to 
you know, me and him spent a significant amount of time right on Sunday, just making sure he understood and knew the scheme. And um, like our scheme isn't overly complicated, right? Um, um, I think our system allows guys to play fast. And there's just some verbiage things that he had to familiarize himself with. And right, he's he's going to go into his first spring practice tomorrow. It's going to be a bunch of new things thrown at him and he's going to get acclimated and he's going to adjust to it, you know, but, you know, having, right, having a bunch of new faces in the building, right, it's, 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 it's a little different for our players, right? Um, but I think that's just part of this profession, right? Anytime you're in this profession, you know, there's going to be, um, there's going to be change, right? And, and I think good players and, and, and I think the system that coaches built, right, guys how to get, have to be able to adapt to change, Right. And so um, the, the guys that we brought in, I tell you, they are, they are a tremendous group of men. Right. Um, no egos. Right. Really, really good. Um, really, really good leaders. You know, and I'm, I'm excited about the next step that they're going to take with their rooms. Um, you know, during this during this process, we have a, at least here in Illinois, we have a pretty extensive interview process. And um, coach did his due diligence to bring those guys in. And we had a chance to sit down with all of them. And it was it was it, we wanted to make sure we found the right fit. Um not only for us as coaches, but for our players, man, like that is super important for us to find the right fit. And, and, and we believe we hit home runs in every single department. And we're really, really excited about our moving forward. Again, this is their, this is their first spring. Some of these dudes, um, Clint has been here maybe a week, right? Um, some of the other coaches have been here a little over a month. Um, it's going to be new. It's going to be their first spring ball here. It's going to be some new things, right? That they're they're going to get acclimated to and they're going to learn and, and 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 by the time fall camp rolls around, once they get through spring, they're going to be that much better at it. Do you have some specific goals for spring ball, Coach? Uh, you know, in terms of maybe, do you want to be able to know what uh, the depth chart looks like uh, yeah, fairly yeah. soon, or anything like that? Or yeah, well, I, I think any time, right? Like you brought in a bunch of new faces, right? We brought in a bunch, bunch of new faces, especially up front. We got a couple of new guys on the back end. We got to find out who can help us. Right. Um, I, we all know we live in a portal world now, but we just have to find out collectively as a staff. Right. Who can help us? Right. Whether that's I mean, well, obviously we have 15 practices to find it out um, rather sooner than later. But, you know, that 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 kind of sets your off season schedule and, and, and your fall camp schedule. So our goal this spring is to find out who can contribute and help us on this football team. Naturally, we want to improve in areas. Um, we want to improve up front. We want to improve on the back end, right? But we got some key players who are who got dinged up towards the latter part of the season. We're going to be out, right? And we got to find out, see, see if some of these young guys can help us, you know? And so that's going to be a major emphasis in spring. And we're going to try to make things really, really simple and fine-tune for them so they can fly around and, 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 and really showcase their ability. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Hey, Aaron. Uh, I'm just curious if there's any... Can you talk a little louder, brother? Yeah, I can't. Sorry, I'm down in some dungeon at a truck stop. You good. <laughs> um, I'm curious if there's anything in your past like that has helped inform you for like how you want to help integrate three new coaches on, on your staff. Like, is there anything you look at like that that helped you as a young coach that you might be able to take now as a defensive coordinator? Yeah, I'm from Immokalee, Florida, man. Like, if you ever been down there, you know, we had in my high school, we had new people integrated every freaking day. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, just naturally being around some new faces, right, having obviously new guys in the building um, within my coaching profession, like I've seen coaches come and go. Right. They they moved on for other opportunities and you get a brand new group of guys in there and new faces in there. Like that's just part of the profession. I think one thing during this interview process that you got to come to terms with relatively fast is are they good people? Right. And so I think when you identify good people. Right. I think the coaching, the coaching part, in my opinion, right, when you identify good people, it's relatively easy. Right. Because if they got kids or they've been around kids, all these dudes come from pretty good places. They know how to coach. And so just trying to find right how they fit into our system and all of them fit. All of them are great dudes. Um, I, I think I know Coach Gibbs obviously had a prior relationship with Coach B and right. Archie was a was a new guy that coach kind of found out about. And so was Clint. But these are good dudes, right? They're really, really good dudes. And it, it started there and obviously they were brought in for an interview and they crushed those. And so, um, you know, I think coach does a tremendous job at just identifying good people and people who, who he's either heard about, who kind of fits what he does and how he does it. Right. And obviously me, me, me being on the coach's wing for so long, right. I know what he likes. I know how he adapts to things. And um, 
I just thought he hit a home run in every single department when, 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 when hiring these guys, but like naturally, right. This profession, you, you're around new coaches yearly, right. Annually you're, you're around new guys. And so that's just the, the nature of the beast. And, and, and I think when you're going through this process, you just try to identify good people. And then from there you find out um, if they fit your system and, and can they coach. Hopefully you can hear me a little bit better now. Much, much um, better, man. Yeah, this technology stuff isn't for me. Um, yeah, I know, Aaron, you've coached corners and you've coached safeties. Uh, with David, have you guys maybe decided how you're going to split those duties up in terms of who coaches which position group? Yeah, so funny enough, we're going to we're gonna meet a lot more together, right? Um, a lot of our meetings are going to be predicated together. Um, there will be certain times during that meeting, right, where I'll start off the meeting and um, – and hit what I need to hit, and then I'll let Coach Gibbs take over the rest of the meeting, right? Coach Gibbs, he just brings a whole different perspective that are that some things that I hadn't been exposed to, right? Being a being a being a younger coach, and so really really excited about that, right? Um, in terms of academic stance, I'll take the bulk of the safeties, and he'll handle um, the bulk of the corners. But we're gonna we're gonna be a unit that meets together a lot because we got a we got a younger faces in there and a bunch of new guys that. Um, obviously coach Gibbs is new as well. We got to, we got to have guys here in the same terminology and how we teach things. But, um, yeah, coach, Co coach Gibbs is, is the DB coach and I'm backing him up as a secondary guy. Appreciate it, Aaron. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Coach, what you, what you learned about yourself in the first year as a coordinator that will really help you going forward? Pardon me. I, can you say that question again? what did you learn about yourself in the first year as the coordinator that will um, going forward? Yes, sir. I, well, I've learned a lot. First and foremost, um, I probably say the biggest thing you learn is 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 right what you could have done different. And I just think when you take a when you look at the whole the, the season as a whole, right, things aren't always as as bad as they that they seemed in that moment, and they are always aren't as good as they may have seemed in that moment. And you just try to take a full inventory. And so for me myself, coming into the off season, right, like one of the biggest things that I kind of tried to um, put myself in a better position going into the spring is how can I put our players in a position of their strengths, right? We, we got some, what I would consider some pretty elite talented players. And so how can I, how can I play to their strengths, right? And, 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 and put that guy in a position to where he can have success constantly, you know? And so um, that's different for Gabe Ackes than it is for Jaheen Clark, right? That's different for um, Dylan Rosiak than it is for um, um, Seth Coleman, right? And so I think first year play caller, you've built this system that you're kind of running and you're running it based on what you have done prior. And you're not kind of really, you're not really thinking about that in totality, but when the season's over, you kind of reflect and like, damn, I could have, I could have helped this young man out a little more right, by putting him in a position of his strength, right, whether that's changing the play call or altering the play call, right, um, and I think towards the latter part of the season, right, um, as I kind of reflect, I started to, I started to do that, and I started to see some positive results in that regard, especially with our pass rush, and so that's probably the biggest thing that I've learned from the season, right, um, also, right, the D coordinator gets all the blame um, for everything that happens, which is part of the deal, you know what I mean? But like, I'll take it, right? That's what I signed up for. But I'm really looking forward to the future. I'm really looking forward to spring ball. And I'm really looking forward to putting our players in a position to be successful and really playing to their strengths. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Hey, hey, one. Aaron, Aaron, can you walk the layman through what you think is translatable in the spring through the fall? Like, once you get to the fall um, and, and – but specifically, like when you get done with spring and they hit May, June, and July, how how are you not back at square one once fall camp rolls around? You know, like what have you learned that has allowed that to happen? Yeah, so I think part of it is our teaching process, right? And so um, we are very intricate and very detailed in terms of our teaching process. That's why the hiring process to find really, really good teachers, right? Obviously good people, but find really good teachers is very, very important. And so once we get through spring, Right. We will spend we will have an opportunity to take some of that off season to just reinstall what we already did in the spring. And I think the reason why our guys don't really, I guess, struggle, per se, to pick it up is because I think we have a really unique, easy teaching mechanism 
that allows them to take what they've learned in spring and transfer it right into the summer or into once we get into fall camp. So um, I, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm not the smartest, I'm not the sharpest tool in the toolbox, right? I, 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 I'm from a smaller country town. I try to make things as simple as possible, right? I, I don't, I'm not a big word guy. I don't try to use a bunch of different definitions. I try to make this thing as, as easy as possible so these dudes can fly around and so that it makes sense. And so um, the way our system is set up, when you can put things in teaching buckets, right, as a former teacher, they naturally can memorize it. Like if I told you that um, 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 every fast food restaurant, okay, was a form of cover three, you know that if you hear McDonald's, we're in a form of cover three, it's just going to be a different rusher. You know if you hear Wendy's, right, we're in a form of cover three, it's just a different rusher. Right. And so anytime you can put things in those kind of buckets, right, naturally it's going to allow your players to learn faster. Right. So when they hear those terms, hear covers, right, cover three, who's rushing. Right. And so um, I think that's how we do things is workforce. Right. We, we spend a lot of time in, in how we implement it. And um, um, I really believe it, it allows our guys to learn things and pick up things at a much faster pace than um, probably some other places. I would think that also gives you and Coach B confidence that that could help you integrate coaches too, because maybe you're just teaching basics more than you're teaching like it's X's and O's and it's more schematic stuff, right? One hundred percent, right? Like it's 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 all transferable, right? Like um, if you have a new player, we got a bunch of new guys coming in here that's got to learn a system and scheme. Well, the same for for coaches, right? Um, Archie and Coach Gibbs has been here for like three four weeks, and I would say that they got our system down, right? They understand the system. Clint is very intelligent. Me and Clint spent all a Sunday together. And that Joker was literally, he was telling me all the calls. He was, he was, he was telling me the jobs and assignments, not just of his guys, but of what the defense is doing collectively, which is, which is very, very impressive. And um, I think when you can put things in buckets like that to allow guys to learn, it just makes the setting that much better, but it allows your guys to learn faster, coaches and players alike. Thank you. Thank you guys.